Hey, y'all. Diana Johnson to my funky, please bring your ass on. <laughs> girl, I'm only one minute late. It was only 801, girl. Listen, baby, I'm tired. All right. I just had a photo shoot today. I did seven looks and I am tired. This is the first time that I have taken pictures in over a decade. And I will say I have found a newfound respect for fashion models and people who have to do mundane stuff like sit up in photo studios all day and take pictures. My legs hurt. My, my ankles don't swole up. I am tired. Okay. I want to give a special shout out to my good friend, Larnette Glenn. She's also the owner and the sole proprietor of Skin Miami. Skin MIA is her business name. Y'all, that's that's the person who, uh, my, my esthetician. She's also my friend. She double backed as my, uh, as my styling assistant today at the photo shoot, steaming all of my clothes, helping me get dressed, moving stuff around during the shoot, helping me lay out my jewelry. Thanks so much to her. And I also want to give a special shout out to my actual stylist, Miss Erica Benoit out of Atlanta. I called Erica with 24 hours notice. And I told her I needed seven looks for a photo shoot. And by the time I landed in Miami the next day, Erica had all the clothes laid out with the accompanying jewelry, the shoes to match and everything. So special shout out to both of those ladies for helping me get what I get done when I needed to get done. To get my brand to the next level. Um, I'm going to tell y'all now, I'm not going to hold y'all long because I'm tired and I feel like I need to, I feel like I just need to wrap my whole legs in Epsom salt. Like something ain't right here. Something ain't right. My internet ain't right either. I ain't even got time to fuss with it. I think Portia must be mad with me because I talked about how she swirled her pussy in that lady pool last night and they conspiring against me. Um, <clears throat> nevertheless, the photo shoot went extremely well. Uh, if you guys don't know, I landed the cover of a magazine that'll be coming out next month. I, I can't tell y'all which magazine. And um, I decided since I have to do a photo shoot for the magazine, I might as well go ahead and do six more looks so I can have some new promo materials, so on and so forth um, for that. Um, before we really dig into the show, um, you know, we got a lot of people on the sick and shut in list and we sending our thoughts and our prayers and our condolences to the families that were affected by uh, the bridge collapsing in Baltimore. For those of you guys who may not have heard, um, a shipping container in Baltimore lost electricity, thus losing control, and it ran into a support pillar of a bridge. The bridge subsequently collapsed in the water and at the time that the bridge was struck, workers were working on the bridge, filling potholes and doing what it is. This happened at about one something in the morning. And uh, six people have not been found yet. And they are uh, presumed to be dead. You know what I'm saying? There are six people. Um, when I went to Florida State University and got my degree in economics, some people ain't never teach me shit about diamond and Navy SEAL, but it's reasonable to assume uh, at this point that if the people have not been found, um, they will not be found alive. Um, we, we can pray and we can hope, but right now six people are still missing and they are presumed to be dead. Uh, something else that's dead, we're going to move right along to something else that's dead or something else that's in the process of dying. And that's Diddy and what's all going on. I ain't even got the energy for this Diddy story. Uh, we have not seen many new developments in the Diddy story since yesterday. A lot of people were running with this narrative that Diddy was trying to flee the city or flee the country 
That was Diddy's airplane. Now, I don't know why they was moving the airplane or maybe somebody was renting the airplane. But Diddy asked here in Miami and was spotted outside of Opelika Airport. Okay, so Diddy is not on the run. And as a matter of fact, I think it's prudent to note that there's no reason for him to be on the run because there's no arrest warrant has not been issued. No arrest warrant has been issued. Now, I don't know if y'all went down to the TMZ and seen the video, but you know what? When the feds come to your house and they walk around the house and secure the house and make sure that everybody is out of the house and in handcuffs, they ain't gotta tell you, they, they ain't gotta tell your house up like that. Go through my stuff with some respect, bitch. Okay. Let me tell you something. Y'all know how I know Diddy stole all them people money from Bad Boy? Because in that video, it was too much damn paperwork, okay? Papers was scattered all over the damn place. I don't know one person who got that much damn papers and paperwork in envelopes and loose leaf paper in their damn house. Paper was everywhere, Paper was in rooms that shouldn't even have rooms in it. One of the rooms, like it had teddy bears and baby clothes in it. Why is there so much paper in the damn nursery? The baby can't even hold his head up good, yet alone hold the Bible, a, a bottle. Why is there so much paper in the nursery? I mean, papers was just everywhere. I'm starting to think that they should hire a bunch of Karens or they should hire them organizing people off of hoarders. And after they kick the damn door in and put guns in everybody's face and secure the premises, then they need to let retired secretarial fish go in there and go through people's papers politely. Okay, why is the wires from the TV all pulled out out the wall? Um, they had the cable boxes was all to the ground. Why is some people in there tearing up Xfinity stuff? Y'all thought he hit a sex tra trafficking victim inside of a cable box? I'm just not understanding that. Don't get me wrong. If Diddy did what they accused him of, he deserves any and everything that comes his way. I'm just trying to understand why is the, the, the wires all out the wall behind the TV why is the nursery turned upside down? Teddy bears and dishcloths was all over the place. And last but not least, that paperwork. Y'all, y'all need to go to TMZ right now and just look. It was, y'all know my mind is weird. It was just so much paper. It was so much paper. Where the hell is all that paper? coming from um i also think it's worth mentioning that in the midst of us doing all this diddy stuff we gotta pray for the kids and y'all some of y'all jumped in yesterday like those are not kids they're adults and when i say the kids i mean his kids his children uh the twin girls king justin and quincy and is it me or do it feel like Quincy don't be in the bunch fool I line with they ass up too uh too too mo too much. Uh Quincy ass was the hell out of Dodge. I guess Quincy said you allegedly tried to take my mama out and my real daddy. I'm staying the hell away. But um let's try let's pray for the kids. The kids ain't got nothing to do with it, especially the little girls and the newborns. Who and let's just pray the cleaning lady get a damn raise or some extra money for having to clean up all that damn paper. Y'all, I might have to reset this thing. I ain't going to do it. Y'all just going to deal with the outages, y'all. I am so tired today. <laughs> Ass turn to red. Speaking of people who on the run, y'all, if y'all thought that they didn't have extradition treaties in Bali, <laughs> girl, 
The people don't found a way <laughs> to serve Russell Simmons ass down to the in Bali, girl. And I'm not talking about Bali's gym. I'm not talking. I'm talking about Bali, honey. Uh, Russell Simmons is currently being sued by one of the people who accused him of sexual assault for defamation. Now, here's what's very interesting. I was like, why is he being sued for defamation? He's being sued for defamation because she came out and said he fooled a lot with her and sexually assaulted her. And by him saying, no, he did not, guess that qualifies as defamation. So I guess she said, if I can't get his ass through the front door, I'm going to get him through the back window. Nevertheless, the people found his ass over there in Bali and they gave him that paperwork. So I guess he's going to ride back over here with Usher the next time Usher go over there. Or maybe he about to get on Diddy Jet that's in Barunda. He going to get on Diddy Jet that's in Barunda and uh, <laughs> fly that back over here to the United States to go to court. Russell Simmons <laughs> and speaking of, honey, can somebody drop down in the comments and tell me what happened if I never responded to the jury duty thing? Because I do not have time for the police to be pulling me over. I'm going so when these hoes take me to jail. I had got a jury duty thing two months ago and I put it on the refrigerator. And I think it said I needed to call the number within two, two weeks or whatever the what the shit been up there for two months. I ain't never calling, and I damn sure didn't go. Oh, you can call and reschedule. Because, because, girl, I'm just going to give up on life if I get arrested. And they be like, why are you in here? And it's because I didn't go to jury duty. Um, so I, I guess I need to call them and get that situated. Larsa Pippen. We all knew that relationship with Larsa Pippen and Marcus Jordan, Michael Jordan's son, was not going to work. I had already been told y'all hoes that Juanita Jordan was not going to let that shit happen. They, uh, they say, what's in this Stanley? Water. Water, bacteria, and lead. That's what's in it. <laughs> No, my cleaning lady, my cleaning lady had put it in the in the dishwasher. It's good. She says, I don't think Marcus is my person. You old has been back to back used botch face bitch. We could have been told you he wasn't your person. He was your nephew. Why you talking about Juanita's son? Your nephew, Marcus? Of course. He wasn't your person. Girl, she must have got a hold of Michael Jordan will and Final Testament and realized Marcus' ass was cut out of it and she got the hell out of Dodge. Juanita said, not with my goddamn money. Listen, lots of people, all you was going to get was some dick and, um, and some puberty changes. That's all you was going to get because Juanita was going to see to it that you wasn't going to get no money. And you shouldn't need none for as long as you went with that big nose, ugly ass California raisin looking ass man called Scotty Pippen. Good God Almighty. It looked like somebody took a piece of pan and slapped Scotty Pippen in the damn face. Nobody's face should be that flat with a nose that big. How your nose that damn big, but your face still managed to be flat? That's all right, though. That face might have been flat, but that basketball was round, and you dribbled the hell out of it. And because of you, now we got to deal with laws of Pippen and Kardashian. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Now, we're going to get serious for a little moment here because um, this subject has been on my mind for a minute, and it, and it started to uh, upset me and my home, girl. Um... Let me find a picture because y'all know I ain't, I ain't got no producer. Library albums. Where's the recent? Why is this not sorted by the most recent pictures? What order is this in? Go to the beginning. 
Okay, there it go. When I think about how much I'm loving you. Okay, here we go. Brett Gelman. Do any of y'all know who Brett Gelman is? Brett Gelman is this gentleman. He played on Stranger Things. This is a, a, a clip from Stranger Things. Brett Gelman. Brett Kelman is calling out Jew hatred. He's calling it Jew hatred. He publicly spoke out in favor of Israel, not in favor of Gaza. He's got a book that's coming out, and he was touring the book. And as a result of his speech, three bookstores have canceled his appearance, and now he is hollering, Jew hatred. I want to be honest with y'all. I am very triggered. Fuck trigger, because that's the new word y'all just use. I'm bothered and I got an attitude with Jewish people. And when they start talking about this Jew hatred shit. And it bothers me because I feel like they're trying to link it to like when black people call racism and they're trying to make, make the two one and the same. I'm sorry, and maybe I spend too much time in the ghetto. I am 40 years old and I have never in my life heard anybody say I hate Jewish people. I have never, first of all, to anybody that's not Jewish, and if y'all don't wear the yarmulkes and the funny dresses and stuff, you register as white people. You navigate the world as white people with all the privileges of being a card-carrying member of the white community. So I just don't, when they're like, Jew hatred, they hate the Jews. Who are these people that hate the Jews? And like I said, if I'm ignorant about it, please Educate me. Are white Christian people sitting at home saying we don't like Jewish people? Because it has been my experience when I worked in the workplace that both of y'all walked side by side and coexisted as one, except one group of y'all celebrated Hanukkah and the other group celebrated Christmas. So I'm, I'm, I'm and I'm not being funny here. Who are these people that hate the Jews? Who are they? And what does Jewish hate in America look like? Does it look like you can't sit here? You're not going to get this job because you're a Jew. We're going to give you a high interest rate on a home loan because you're a Jew. I'm just lost. And like I said, I am not above reproach and I am open to being corrected. And maybe this hatred that the Jew people are talking about is coming from communities and circles that I do not have access to and that I am not a part of. But when a person in the United States says Jew hatred, I don't know what they're talking about. Who is hating them? I've never seen nobody standing on the corner with signs protesting, we hate the Jews, go back to where you come from, no Jews allowed, no Jews welcome. And so now he's talking about his book signings got canceled by three bookstores so far, calling it Jew hatred. No, it's not Jew hatred, bitch. It was the fact that you were careless with your words and you, you're being inhumane towards the Gazian people. Now, listen, like I said before, I'm standing, I'm staying and minding my gay African-American business when it comes to this Gaza and this Israel stuff because I don't understand it enough, okay? But let me ask y'all a question, and this ran through my mind yesterday. Do the Jewish community equate Hamas and Gaza with the KKK. Is that their KKK? And if Hamas 
is the equivalent of their KKK, then I'm beginning to understand a little. If you are telling me that Hamas is their KKK, then I can better wrap my head around it. And then I can better, and then if you're telling me that Gaza supports the ideology of Hamas, which is their KKK, then, you know, I can start to form my mind around why the Jewish people are not seeing it for none of the Gazans at all. Is that what you're telling me? And if that's not what you're telling me, then I'm confusion. And I'm just trying to equate it to something that we can, that I can understand. Because if you were to tell me that the American military was going in and bombing the KKK, I wouldn't give a damn. And if you told me that not only are they b bombing the KKK, but they're bombing the KKK immediate family members, I wouldn't give a damn either because chances are they follow that same ideology. But if the two are not akin like that, then Jewish people need to come up off of it and recognize that while Hamas is hiding within the people of Gaza, everybody in Gaza does not deserve to get bombed up. And what is being committed over there in Gaza is genocide. I will not sit back and be quiet while you starve out a whole community of people in an effort to take down Hamas. I understand collateral damage. I understand protecting yourselves. But there has got to be a better way of doing this than killing everybody. And what it's giving right now, what Israel, the United States, and every, everybody else is giving right now, is just fuck it. Since we started killing off, let's just go ahead and kill them all off and be done with this situation once and for all. That's what it's giving. And that's what it's looking like to me. That fuck it. We just finna kill them all. Men, women, and children. Starve them out so we don't have to deal with this problem anymore. Move on. Oh, this is my auntie, which I call her bad. I know that's some mess. Did y'all see this girl? She know went viral on the internet saying that Anthony Mackie is a rude ass celebrity. She says that she was at the gas station pumping gas and Anthony Mackie pulled up in his all black truck with his windows down, music blasting, smoking his cigar. That's the Anthony Mackie I know. Always got that cigar in his mouth. Anyway, she says she went on over there to speak to Anthony Mackie, and he did her like this. He shooed her. And she was saying that all she wanted to do was come over and say, you know, oh, my God, I like your movies. I like your work. Typical fandom behavior. And uh, she says Anthony was extremely rude to her. Now, this is not the first time that we have gotten wind that Anthony was anything less than kind to fans you know it was so it was the two older ladies one time who i felt like violated him their grandson wanted to take a picture he said he wasn't taking pictures that day and then granny geraldine walked over there just to confirm and he told her ass again he wasn't taking pictures today that wasn't rude to me um i will say this where there's smoke there's fire um Anthony, you know, it feels like you are giving a leave me alone and treat me like a regular person tea. But unfortunately, you're not afforded that luxury. You're just not. Now, celebrities are people too, and they deserve some quiet time and some private time. If they're at a restaurant eating, you leave them alone. If they're on the phone, you leave them alone. If they're mid-conversation with their family or with their kids, you throw your hand up, but you leave them alone. Anthony, if you were at a gas station, the girl didn't make a scene. She just walked over 
wanting to say a quick one two, it would have costed you nothing to do a quick one two with the girl, take a selfie, tell her have a blessed day, and thank you for loving and supporting you. That's the proper way to handle it. And yes, although people are celebrities, I always say this: they live very privileged lives. And if you thought that it was not going to come with a cost, you are a damn fool. Okay. Having a smile, wave, kiss babies, and sign autographs is the cost of being a celebrity. And when you don't feel like being a celebrity, you're supposed to stay your ass home that day. You're supposed to stay your home. But on the same token, some fans need to understand that you're not entitled to people's personal space either. But in this situation, I definitely think Anthony is more in the wrong than the girl was. Quick story. And not trying to compare myself to Anthony Mackie because he on the A, B list and I'm down here on the Z list. But one time I went to bar one in Miami Beach, Peter's restaurant, when it was open. Uh, waitress was taking me, hostess was taking me out to my seat outside. This girl stopped me and she goes with an attitude. Yeah, I'm in town visiting. I sent you a DM. I wanted to buy you a drink or something. I sent you a DM. And just the way she said it, like, okay, you sent me a DM. I'm not trying to be funny. And once again, I am nobody's Beyonce, but I'm more than the bitch that work at the post office, okay? I said, first of all, I don't check my DMs. If I check DMs, I would be sitting in the DM all day long. I don't check them, number one. Number two, and I'm not trying to be funny. I love y'all to death. For safety reasons, I'm not meeting up with none of y'all. I am not blindly meeting up with a nan fucking one of y'all. I don't know you. You know what I'm saying? And like, she was like mad. She was mad. And I'm like, you were mad I didn't answer. And even if I did answer, your request was preposterous. If I'm doing a meet and greet in a controlled environment, that's fine. If I happen to be out while in Miami, that's fine. But I am not getting dressed and leaving my house to meet some random person off of Instagram. I'm not doing that. Another thing that I realized I had to stop doing I had to stop posting where I was at. It was me, James, and a couple other people. We was down to the pool hall against some lemon pepper wings. And I had posted where I was at. Child. About 30 minutes later, four girls showed up. They're like, oh my God, fuck it, I need her. Like, hey, how you doing? They were like, oh my God, we were hoping you were still here. We saw you were here on Instagram. We're visiting. We drove here from South Beach. They were pleasant. We had a good time. We drank, we slept five, but that experience taught me something. Post late, post after you leave, or don't post the location. More of the story is, and, and the funny thing about it is, even though I posted where I was at, that still was grounds for me to cuss their motherfucking ass out, because, bitch, I'm out trying to have a good time. Ain't nobody tell your ass to Uber the fuck to North Miami from South Beach in hopes of meeting me and then standing behind me and hovering for a damn hour. I don't want to talk. <laughs> Child, I turned around. I hugged fish. I said, hey. I turned right back around to my friends. Okay? Don't be just showing up. But it taught me for safety reasons. And it's funny because I'm a modest bitch. I just be trying to operate and play on Instagram the same way regular people do. And I imagine... I uh, I reached a point where I cannot, for safety reasons, post where I'm at. But Anthony Mackie don't owe that girl nothing. There was a nicer way he could have did it. But my take with celebrities is, you know, we live very privileged lives, and it has a cost. And the cost is your privacy and the fans. You know, there are days I don't want to hug babies and kiss faces and take pictures and hear what people have to say because I've heard it all before. But you sit there and you take it with grace and you smile and wave so that person walks off having a clean, nice interaction with you. Moving right along. Euphoria, the show on HBO. 
China, they say that thing has been delayed indefinitely and that the cast members are allowed to go pursue other endeavors. Listen, stop keeping them people um, in limbo. Y'all know y'all not bringing that, that shit back. First of all, them damn 37-year-olds that's playing high schoolers, they about to start developing gray hair, okay? Zendaya cannot play nobody's high schooler no more. So was the rest of their ass. They, y'all don't let so much time. These some big, these must be, and I'm finna use the word. I don't give a damn who get mad. These must be some retarded ass high school kids. They big grown asses still in damn high school. Okay. Uh, unless y'all gonna speed it up and make their ass be seniors in college or doing their postgraduate work there in grad school somewhere. They, child. <sighs> I tell you, it's right. Delay and different. And Nika King need her money. I don't know if y'all know it. The lady that played the mama on, uh, I almost said Stranger Things. Then I almost said Things. Remember? What's the name of this damn show? Euphoria. The lady who said. Played the mama on Euphoria was my 12th grade high school drama teacher. And so that lady need she needs y'all to come back and bring that show back. Uh escaping SWV. They finally don't got this shit together and they going on tour. And I'm gonna tell y'all something. And they bet not invite Latasha either. They bet not invite Latasha. They bet not. Tasha bet not be nowhere near that tour. The hell she putting them people through. Now, I would be curious to know how the headlining situation was resolved. I looked at the flyer and SWV and Escape are both written in the same size font and on the same line. So I'm guessing they're co-headlining. Maybe SWV will open up in this city, that city, that city. Escape will open up in this city, that city, or the other city. I'm guessing that is what will probably happen with special guests, Total, Maya, and, and 702. I wonder if Keisha Epps from Total going to even be there because she don't need the money. It's Pam Lickham Low and the Twat who need the money and... uh. Kima, Kima, Keisha, Ampe, that, that's who it is. That's who it is. Stay the hell away from Rocky. Stay the hell away from Latasha. Are, are you nodding? Medication, edibles, high drunk, what is it? It's called work, baby. I am tired. And I opted to show up versus canceling. I am really tired. You must have missed the top half of the service. I had a photo shoot today. I'm tired. Uh, moving right along in the shitty state of Florida, Ron DeSantis has signed a bill wanting to make it a law banning social media accounts for children under the age of 14. Now, here's the thing, right? I um personally, personally, um, I have no problem with with it, right? I don't think children under the age of 14, I think 14 is a good age for your children to begin to have Instagram accounts and all that type of stuff because they have too much access to information. Me personally. So it doesn't really bother me or upset me that your ha child has to be 14 in order to get on social media. Here's how where we have to be careful. The dictatorship style of ruling. Although this doesn't negatively affect me, it negatively affects 14-year-old and younger, you have to wonder what next. They're taking away rights and freedoms so quickly. Yeah, it, you might not be on the agenda item today. And, you know, it's just like a lot of black people with Trump and DeSantis. 
Baby, y'all was happy when he was on that LGBT kick. Y'all was happy. Then he got on that women's kick. Y'all, y'all, oh, oh, y'all didn't like that shit. So you got to understand something. It might be me today, but it's going to be you tomorrow. And y'all Republicans love no big government. And y'all also love let me teach my own kids. I don't think it's the government's job to censor what other people should do with their children. That's a parent's job. Uh, just like movies are rated R, PG, PG-13, let parents make the decision what is acceptable for their child and not the government. And once the government starts diddling and daddling and things like that, you may want to be careful because it's Instagram today reproductive rights the next day, gay rights the next right, and on and on and on. It will be something else next. Last but not least on the list, y'all, I'm going to get y'all out of here because I am really tired. A fan by the name of the Queen Dot Manny, she said she wanted to know, um, did I feel lost and confused in my 20s? Uh, I absolutely did. A lot of people refer to their 20s, my Vaseline at the top. A lot of people refer to their 20s as the best time of their life. I absolutely hated my 20s. Now, don't get me wrong. I liked it for all of the 20-year-old things that I was doing. Clubbing, sex, being reckless, staying up late, going all out over the place, driving out of town. That's what 20s were good for for me. But was I lost and confused? Absolutely. I did a post the other day that said, right the age you were when you finally became a grown man or woman. I didn't become grown until 37. Um, but my 20s were lost and confusing. That's when I was doing accounting. I was doing what I thought I was supposed to do. My parents still had a mental hold on me, my village, my family, or whatever. I, I was in bondage. I hated my 20s. Things lightened up early to mid-30s. And then that from my uh, mid-30s until now, life has just progressively gotten better, better, and better, and better, and better. But here's my advice to you if you're lost and confused in your 20s. Go get lost and confused some more. Because if there's any time and place that you are supposed to be lost and confused and a societal concession will be made for you to be lost and confused, it's while you're in your 20s. That is the time for you to be lost and confused. With that being said, y'all, that's going to be our show for the night. I'm letting y'all out of here 20 minutes later. Mama is tired. I can barely speak. I know I'm getting tired when my voice starts dragging. And my eyes start getting heavy. I just want to lay down and go to sleep. Nevertheless, be sure to put something in the collection plate. And I will see y'all tomorrow. Don't forget, put something in the cash out collection plate. Woo! When I tell you that photo shoot wore me out, it wore me out. Stay tuned for the photo shoot. Coming soon to you. I'm going to start releasing some of the pictures and stuff. And I'll call y'all old hoes later. Bye. <laughs>